All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. It is a nice and cloudy day here in uh, in sunny Tacoma, Washington, but that's uh, part, and pro- part and parcel for February. Um, still a good day because we have Mark McGuire with us from Florida. I'm sure he has sun over there. Uh, Mar- Mark, Marvin, sorry. Marvin McGuire. I apologize for that. Um, Navy veteran, multifamily master. He has a lot of experience. Uh, I'm super excited to jump into this. Marvin, thank you very much for har- uh, jumping on the show. Yeah, glad to be here. Super glad to be here and uh, provide some value to your listeners. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I told you before we got on here, we like to start with stories. Uh, I'm sure you got a good one. So take us to the beginning of your story. How'd you get started in real estate? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, I spent about 25 years in the Navy. And over the course of my career, my wife and I collected uh, either intentionally or unintentionally the whole unexpected landlord uh, occurrence, you know, several, almost, I think at one point we had six single family uh, homes, you know, dotted around military bases around the United States. And what we found very, very rapidly as we, uh, as we transitioned out of the military and went into corporate America that, you know, you have to replace a, a roof or an HVAC or you have a leak or whatever. And then regardless of how, how, well, a lot of those assets are, are cash flowing. Uh, it sucks up a lot of your profits very, very rapidly. So we were looking in probably 22, looking for a way to kind of take that business and scale into something a little bit, you know, more efficient as far as our time was concerned. And we we transitioned over to multifamily in uh, a little over a year ago and uh, were able to get involved in and purchase uh, just about 500 multifamily doors in 23. And we're looking to do another close to 500 or more and 24. So we're super excited about it. Yeah, man, that is awesome. Um, and that just goes to show that things can change very quickly once you put your mind your mind to it. Um, and you did it in 23, which was historically, it's been a bad time to buy properties. Uh, you know, just there isn't the expectation between buyers and sellers is off there. The interest rates are high, um, but you did it. You got it 500 doors one year. Um, so congratulations on that. And that's a lesson for everybody out there. If you guys want to get into real estate and you feel like it's just a daunting task, it's going to take 20 years. It's not. Marvin did it in one year. So I love uh, love hearing those kind of stories. Thank you. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of work, but uh, I think it's taking action and being consistent, you know, yep. and, and uh, you know, surrounding yourself with good people. Yep, absolutely. Um, so. Let's go back a little bit. You said you had six single family across the states. I want to I want to go into your multifamily, but let's talk about just kind of your beginnings. Um, so were these single family? They were stretched across literally different states, um, like six different states, or was some of them grouped? How was that worked out? Uh, some of them were grouped. You know, we spent a significant amount of time in different areas. For example, we had two rental properties in Jacksonville, Florida. We spent mm-hmm. six years up in Jacksonville earlier in my career, and. Uh, you know, one of them was great, you know, it was pretty, uh, you know, rinse and repeat, pretty push the button and collect the check. And the other one was the tenants left in the middle of the night and looked like they had been working on a motorcycle in the uh, master bedroom. And, oh, uh, you know, it looked like maybe a teenage daughter had driven an SUV through the back end of the garage and, you know, 15, almost $15,000 later, we were able to repair it and get it back on the market. So it was you know, every deal is different, but, uh, but those two were in the same city, you know, uh, as far as that's concerned. Yeah. It only takes one, um, kind of nightmare story uh, in single family yeah. to realize like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Yeah. 100%. And we, we've had a couple, we've got three right now, single families in, in Tampa that are, that are very, very close to each other that we still have. And, you know, recently we had a leak in the master bedroom of one of them, uh, they ended up being under the under the master bedroom in the slab, so you got to pull up all the flooring and take oh. a jackhammer to the uh, to the slab. Just you know, crazy stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's not you know when you're talking hundred unit multifamily buildings, that kind of repair can be absorbed by the uh, the cash flow. Um, but if you're talking about one door, that kind of repair <laughs> is going to suck out the cash flow. Uh, for, yes, sir. You know, x number of years. It's a it's a big deal. It is. It certainly is. We 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 feel like we've learned it the hard way, but we're uh, we're on the right path now. Yep. 
Um, so yeah, let's talk about that. 500 doors one year. That is a great track record. It's fresh in your mind. So I'm sure you can go into the nitty gritty. Um, and when you say, when we go into the details here, take the perspective of somebody listening who is excited about real estate. They're just getting into it and they just, they want to, they want to get to where you are in a year. Um, so you, you made that decision one year ago to get into commercial, get into larger scale multifamily. Um, what were the first few steps you took to get yourself down that path? Perfect. Perfect. Well, we have the, uh, we have the, it's only been a year. So you're right. It's fresh in our mind. So whenever we, you know, really started to uh, think about making this pivot, you know, we knew that, you know, we understood the value of real estate. We understood kind of the basic mechanics, albeit not the intricacies of multifamily. So we knew that we had to get educated. Uh, so we joined a mastermind program uh, to get educated. Uh, can, you, that uh, can you give that mastermind a shout out? Uh, sure. Uh, it's Rod Khalif's program, the warrior oh, yeah. program with Rod Khalif. And uh, He's been on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Rod is an amazing, uh, authentic, genuine guy and his program is amazing. So shout out to Rod Khalif. Uh, so we joined Rod's, Rod's program uh, this time last year, really. And that accomplished two or three different really key things. One, it helped us get educated. Two, uh, it, sur it gave us a network that really, really, I think, ha helped us to accelerate our progress. And three, it provided, you know, that coaching, you know, and that fallback to be able to out reach out to folks that are, you know, a year ahead of us or three years or five years ahead of us. And so that really kind of uh, put us on solid ground and accelerated us at the same time. So, you know, fast forward three months, we invested as LPs uh in a deal just to kind of get that feeling of okay is this really going to work you know people are out there getting started and they're like hey i know what what's a limited partner and what's passive income and how do i really do this and we wanted to have that feeling on hey does this stuff really work and mm -hmm. you know if you're going to ask somebody for money or if you're going to try to raise money you want to have gone through the ppm and the subscription documents and hit you know hit send on that wire and, and uh so we did that. And then it's, you know, I and, knew uh, just pausing it real quick there. Yeah. Um, so one, how big, what was the minimum investment in this deal? And then two, how'd you find your GP? Uh, one minimum investment was 50 okay. and they usually a typical is ranges between 50 and hundred, but this one was 50. Mm -hmm. And the way we found our GP was via that network. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that, that program's probably 12 to 1500 people now. And uh, there's probably four or 500 people in that outfit that are really, really working the system hard. And so we, we started reaching out to, you know, to operators and folks that are doing good deals. And that's how we got connected. Nice. I love it. Um, so you did, you did a limited partner investment in somebody else's deal um, from that yeah. point. I mean, that one hasn't gone full cycle because it, you know, it's only been no. a year. So no. you're still invested there. Uh, yeah. How did you get? into the next stage of, uh, of investments. Yeah. So the coaching program kind of helped me identify what I'm going to do best, you know, and that's raise money. You know, I'm a, I, I retired from the military. I'm kind of a chatty guy from Texas and uh, went into corporate IT sales after I retired. So immediately, you know, it was like, Hey, you're going to be, you're going to be a capital raiser. So after we kind of got our CRM and our network set up, you know, to raise capital, you know, we started reaching out to our to operators around that group as well saying, Hey, put me in coach, you know, I can raise money for your deal, put me in. And, you know, we got a lot of no's, we got a lot of no's because, Hey, you're just a newbie. You know, you've only been here six months. You really don't know what you're doing, but finally got, you know, a, a really gracious operator team that said, Hey, I'll put you in. And we were able to raise $2 million for our first deal. And at that point it was kind of, it really started the the momentum really accelerated at that time. Gotcha. Awesome. Um, so you guys are not, you're not GPs on the deal. You are capital raisers for GPs. Or co-GPs on the deal. So we have a, we have a, a pretty decent percentage. I mean, we did due diligence. We put forth earnest money on the deal. Uh, we still do investor relations and we raised capital for the deal. So we're, we're co-GPs co on, uh, on, on those deals and, and all the deals that other than the LP deal that we did last year. Okay. Um, for everybody listening, explain the different roles in a in a team when they're going to take down a larger commercial asset. 
Certainly. So a GP team is usually uh, really usually ideally about five to six. I've seen them as large as eight partners, depending on the size of the deal, the larger, larger deals. But typically, you know, you've got somebody who has underwritten, who's who's in acquisitions, who's fi- found the deal, is always talking to commercial brokers, who actually is finds the deal, then that same person may underwrite the deal and do the analysis, or they may pass it off to somebody who does a detailed market analysis and and sub-market analysis and and does the rent analysis and the financial and really figures out whether it's a good financial deal that that you could actually raise fun, money for and, and attract investors. And then you've got, typically you've got a team that does due diligence that'll, if you get the deal under contract, we'll go out and do the inspections and and con, you know, work with the contractors to inspect the plumbing and the electrical and the roofs and all of that. Uh, a lot of deals will still require something called a key personnel, which is a person who will sign on the loan and has the net worth and the liquidity uh, necessary for these banks to make these multi-million dollar loans. And then finally, you'll have usually about 30 to 35% of that, you know, call it the general partner's share of a deal. That's 30 to 35 percent of that deal will be set aside for the folks that raise money for the deal, you know, and that'll be, you know, it'll be open to everybody, but they'll be they'll be hired guns that, hey, that's all they do. And that'll be set aside for them. And then you usually have about 30 percent set aside for the team that's going to asset manage the deal that is going to manage that deal over the course of the five to seven year business plan. And uh, that asset management is you can't stress how important it is because that team that asset manages that that asset over the course of four or five six seven years they don't they don't get paid you know they do it you know the general partners usually get their real payment at the end of the deal so that's uh that's kind of how those roles and responsibilities are set up yep yeah and i like um yeah i I like going through the each individual role because it shows you know, people out there who want to step up, who have maybe a couple single families and they want to get into the commercial side of things. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do. And when you're, you know, if you've started to buy single family properties, you've on a, on a lower level, you've already gone through each of these steps on your own. Um, so you kind of understand the gist of, you probably haven't raised capital, but you've, you know, you are the source of capital or maybe like a friend, a family has gone in on the deal with you. Um, you're asset managing the the property because you're hiring the property manager. You're making sure they're doing their job, or you're managing the property yourself. Um, so people and and you've underwritten it. Obviously, you you looked at the property, you decided it was a good deal. So you you already know what the different roles are. Um, so if there was a specific role in that experience that you really liked, you enjoyed, that you orient yourself towards, um, that can be your niche. That can be your focus. When you jump to the commercial side, if you're really good at underwriting, if you're really good at finding deals, if you're good at raising capital, those, those can be your, you know, that can be your niche. That can be your strong suit that you bring to a team of five, six, seven people who go out and, uh, and take down deals. Um, so that's awesome. And you're the capital raiser. So that is, uh, that's what we're going to talk about next. Uh, when you started raising capital, um, how did you go about finding high net worth individuals? Uh, and do you have a system in place that kind of that you've identified over the course of the last year um, that really helps you scale this? Yeah, 100 percent. Great question. Uh, yes to both. Uh, how I got kind of built out our database, call it CRM, your, your customer relationship management database is uh you know, I sent an email to everybody that in my Google, you know, you can go to your Google, your Gmail, and you hit A and the two and all the people with A come up and B and all the people with B come up. Uh, you know, I sent emails to those folks. And then I sent I, a text message to everybody kind of in my cell phone that, you know, I communicate with. And it was it was really non-threatening. It was just like, hey, uh, friends and family, Victoria and I are starting on a new endeavor. We're going to launch a new small business focused on multifamily investing. Uh, if you're interested in following along in our journey, please send me your best email address. And if you're okay with me adding you to our database. And and so, uh, you know, just that alone, you know, your family, your close friends, and a lot of your second and tier, second and third level friends are going to sign up, whether it's they want to track your progress or they want to see how bad you, you know, you kind of fall on your sword. So, and and there are people in both camps, you know, 
So that helped us, you know, probably we have all got, you know, several hundred people in our phone or in our email account. So we, we were, you know, that set us up with probably a hundred, 125 people immediately that we could, you know, we could reach out to. And then we use a, uh, we evaluated a number of different CRMs, uh, you know, HubSpot, Active Campaign. We kind of settled on Active Campaign. Okay. And then we built a, uh, a 10 email drip campaign that kind of goes out to our investor pool that kind of, you know, email one kind of introduces, Hey, this is Marvin Victoria McGuire, you know, Marv raises capital and Victoria is an exceptional underwriter. Here are our values. And then over the course of those next nine emails, really eight emails, it's, Hey, why multifamily? How is multifamily different from single family? What are the tax benefits? What's passive income? What's forced appreciation? Really an educational uh, you know, about 40 days worth of education. And then that last email is just, Hey, what to expect from this point forward. And so once they get through that initial education emails, educational emails, they'll get two or three emails from us a month about, you know, market updates, what we're working on personal updates. And then of course, if we have a deal, a deal alert and why we like the deal. Nice. Um, and, I kind of want to stress you the, how small your initial grouping is. People think that, you know, you need thousands and thousands of contacts. You said a hundred to 125 people. Um, that is, that was your first, you know, right. yeah. your first CRM, your first batch of, of investors. You don't need a ton of people. Um, it's, it's amazing, especially if you're connected with people who are maybe, you know, nearing their retirement, they've already built up their nest egg. Uh, so they do have money that they are looking to, to invest a lot of times in things that are not, um, you know, not stock market related, people have been burned by the stock market. And so they're 100%. looking for other assets to invest into. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. So you're one year into it. You've been into 500 units so far. Uh, what does the next two to three years look like for you? Uh, I think we can do 500 units uh, this year and 500 units next. I mean, we're, we really think that the second half of this year, uh, is going to be really, really good because we don't think that we're going to get any interest rate relief until probably June. So we think deals are going to start popping on the market, better deals, probably the latter half of this year, and then uh, really heating up and being pretty consistent and sustained throughout 25. And the one thing is, is, you know, there's tons of supply coming in around, multifamily supply coming in around a lot of larger markets. So we think uh, once we get through that kind of all these deliveries, there's not a whole lot of uh, supply, you know, post 25. And I think that'll help the market as well. Nice. So 500 a year, that's your goal. That's the goal. That's the goal. Now, whether we get there or not, we're going to, that's the goal. It's always good to have a goal. I mean, but we're only going to bring, you know, the, the very, very best deals to our investors. We're kind of conservative to a flaw. So if it's a hundred this year and, and 600 next year, or if it's 300 and 300, uh, we just like to have a goal. And is this with, um, or is this with the same team that you're looking to do the 500 every, you know, throughout the years, or do you have a number of GPs that you have vetted and you feel like they are ready They're They, they have the experience that you're looking for. They're in the markets that you're looking for. Um, yeah. Tell us about the team that you're going to be investing alongside. Uh, we have three kind of partnership teams that we typically uh, look to when we get a deal on the market, but something that's a little different, you know, my wife, Victoria and I uh, are a little unique in that she really is an exceptionally talented underwriter. So we know what a deal really looks like immediately. Mm -hmm. So we're probably going to try to uh, take down our own deal, you know, okay. this year and, uh, you know, see what being a, a lead operator is versus being just a capital raiser. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, there are different responsibilities, different levels of work, but they're also, you know, different payouts as well. So we're going to, uh, we're going to investigate that this year and, uh, and see which one we like better. Right on, man. Well, good luck to that. It's always, uh, it's you. fun to be on the asset management side. It can be a bit of a headache at times, but it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's a good ride. All right. Well, Hey, that, uh, that brings us to the end of our uh, our period here. It's time to jump into the quick question round. Are you ready? Yeah, awesome. Let's do it. It starts with books or any form of education. Um, could be Netflix shows, could be YouTube channels, whatever. I just need two recommendations. 
one for general life wisdom, and then one for real estate? Uh, general life wisdom, I would say 2X is easier, uh, 10X is easier than 2X as a book that uh, really, really is applicable kind of across your life, which I found was awesome. And uh, real estate, although this is going to be a little different because people aren't going to really go real estate. Uh, there's a book by Ryan Holiday called The Obstacle is the Key. Oh, the Obstacle is the Way. The Way, yeah. The Obstacle is the Way. And it so hit me as, as applicable to real estate is because, hey, you know, you've got to, you have to attack your challenges. And I, I think it's a really, if you read it from a real estate perspective, you'll immediately see the, the value. Yeah, I uh, I read that book a long time ago, um, and I really liked it. I should reread it because you're right. It's I feel like it is especially applicable to real estate because yeah. the hard deals are the ones that are going to have the greatest return. Um, so if you're willing to just look those difficulties in the face and tackle them head on, you know that's where you're really going to get the the return uh, that you're looking for. So good recommendation. Um, moving us on to the next question. This is for your younger self. Your slightly younger self. Let's go back to yeah. Marvin uh, of a year ago who had not jumped into the commercial side yet. Go to him, look him in the eye, give him one piece of advice moving forward. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Good advice. Yeah, um, don't be afraid. So uh, if you go a little bit more into that when you were first starting, um, did you hesitate for a while or? Oh my goodness. I mean, uh, you know, getting into a mastermind, you know, a lot of them are expensive, you know, and you go, oh my God, thousand plus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, and you go, Hey, you know, am I ever going to see this money again? Or is it going to be worth it? Or is it, is it a scam or is it a rip off, whatever? And there are so many out there to choose from. And I would say, do your due diligence, do, you know, get referrals, do all the things that you would do when you're buying a home. And then don't be afraid, you know, if, if all that data checks out and the referrals are positive and you're really committed to working the system and, and I, you know, hammer the desk and stomp the feet. If you're really committed to working the system and following instructions and taking action, then go for it. Don't be afraid because because uh, we're living proof, you know, it, it's uh, it works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's so easy, especially when you're you're ready to sign those papers, ready to do whatever. Uh, it's easy to hesitate and just procrastinate and not want to do it, but you just got to push yourself through that wall um, and you'll make it. And if people want recommendations for good masterminds, because I do feel like that's a good uh, a good place to start. Um, Rods is a great one. I've heard rec good recommendations for that. And then also Jake and Gino, a lot of people have been on here um, and have said that's also a great program. So uh, reach out to them and don't be afraid. Just, uh, just jump, you know, make the leap, get into it. Push through. Exactly. You hit it right on the head. All right. Next question is uh, about the U.S. It's a big place. A lot of opportunity. Give me the single metro you're most excited about investing in today. Uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Greenville, South Carolina. Interesting. I, that um, You're the first person to say that. So why Greenville? Uh, tons of people are moving to South Carolina because it is a very business friendly state. Uh, it's part of what uh, a lot of the business community calls the battery belt. You know, a lot of these electrical vehicle, uh, BMW, Hyundai, uh, a lot of these large automotive companies are putting, I think BMW has got a $3.8 billion uh, automobile factory between Greenville, South Carolina and Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, Hyundai just invested almost $4 billion just outside of Savannah, Georgia. So, you know, we invest in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and Texas. And we found that both Georgia, Charleston, Savannah, upstate, you know, Greenville, South Carolina are all just incredible places to invest. Nice. Well, there we uh, put one down for Greenville. Um, you know, obviously everybody really likes the Southeast, uh, South, you know, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, um, but that's the first time for Greenville. So love to hear that. Uh, all right. Next question is about finding deals. I will uh, open this one up and I'll say um, finding deals or GPs. So what is your favorite way to get in contact with new GPs or to find new deals? Get on the phone. 
<laughs> nobody wants to make cold calls. Nobody wants to, uh, you know, a lot of people say I'm working Crick's here. I'm working LoopNet or I'm on broker websites. And, and those are all, you know, good ways to quote unquote find deals, but establishing relationships, regular relationships uh, with brokers is absolutely incredible. So, you know, I've got a list of about 30 brokers that I try to call every month. Uh, and a lot of those calls are just talking about Georgia football or, or recent current events or when would you shoot on your last round of golf? But, you know, uh, every once in a while, those, you know, those conversations leads to, oh, man, I've got a deal here. Let me let, let me send it over to you. So get on the phone and make those calls. Yep. It's uh, so important to actually get in contact with people and have those conversations because most of the deals that go to market um, have already been picked over by tons of people that that broker sent to before they put it on market. 100%. So if you want to, if you want to get a good deal, you got to talk to the broker before he actually lists it. All right. Um, second to last question. This is about lessons learned. Um, I know you haven't gone through a ton of deals yet, but I'm sure you have some good lessons in there. Uh, not every deal that we go into goes the way we expect. Um, but when, you know, a, a wrench is thrown into the mix, that's when you learn the biggest lesson. So what was a deal that went a little sideways for you? And then what was the lesson you learned from it? Uh, we were, we bid on a deal just south, uh, about 15 minutes south of Greenville, South Carolina in the fall, uh, submitted an LOI, got into best and final, uh, missed on best and final by a hundred thousand dollars on a $13 million deal. So just oh, dismissed it. <laughs> deal fell through. It came back to us. Uh, we missed on it again by, I forget, it, less than that. And I started finding myself going, well, what, what if we, what if we did this? And what if we did this to try to get that deal high, you know, get our offer price higher. And in the end, I'm glad that, you know, we didn't get the deal because we're here and it's not going well, and I guess the lesson learned is don't get emotional about the deal. Mm, yep. You know, don't chase the deal. The numbers are the numbers are the numbers are the numbers. And so don't get emotional. Know what your offer price is. Know what the price is that it still makes money and, and get great returns for your investors. And and be willing to just, hey, draw that line. That's what it is. Yep. So, Yeah, it's so uh, it's so tempting to you know, once you've underwritten a deal and you've really put a lot of effort into it yeah. and you just want it to close, yeah, come it's, on, so, come on. it's so tempting to you know, <laughs> imagine things about the underwriting yeah. that you can change, but don't just uh, stick with your underwriting and, and make sure that you don't, uh, don't give in on that. hundred percent. All right. Last question. This is for the listeners. You've given us a lot to think about. I'm sure people want to reach out. Um, what's the best way for them to do that? And what can they expect when they do reach out? Yeah, our website is uh, Hartzell, H-E-A-R-T-S-I-L-L, capitalpartners.com. Uh, my email is marv.mcguire at Hartzell Capital Partners. Uh, you can find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, you know, reach out to me personally. And what what folks can expect if they do reach out is, uh, you know, an authentic relationship with somebody who will shoot them straight. Uh, we'll be transparent. Uh we're happy to share what we know to folks that are curious, like you're doing here and uh, try to do right by people. You know, we uh, we're just regular people, just like your listeners and just like you trying to uh, make a better life for ourselves and for our kids and uh, want to help others do the same thing. There you go. I will, uh, I'll put that link in the show notes. So if you guys want to reach out, just click the little more in the description. Um, it'll pull down that full description in there. You can find Marvin's link. All right, Marvin, that wraps it up. Thank you uh, very much for hopping on the show. Awesome. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate it, Gabe. Absolutely. Uh, for everybody who's here with us today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason we do this. So if you guys have questions, reach out to me, Gabe at realestateinvestingclub.com. Um, if you want to support the show, just give us a like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. <laughs> Thank you.